right, welcome back to Bayou Time. It appears we have the uh, the issue resolved with the phone lines. 879-1231 if you want whole. Give us a call, 879-1231. We apologize uh, for that. We were talking, uh, you know, about several local issues as well as the issue regarding the LSU football team with, uh, you know, the quarterback Jordan Jefferson being the uh, subject of an alleged uh, second degree battery or uh, battery, if you will, uh, regarding a fight or stemming from a fight at Shady's Bar uh, a few nights ago. If you'd like to discuss that, 879-1231, as well as any other local topic or national topic, as we always open it up uh, for phone calls. Hello, welcome to Buy You Time. Thank you for calling. Hi, how's it going, Jason? Hi, doing fine. Sounds like you were the first caller we tried. Yeah, but... Okay. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah, I, uh, okay. wait. How does that commercial go? Uh, can you hear me now? Good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, I wanted to talk national news. I know there's a lot of other stuff going on, but okay. I also encourage other callers to talk about national news. All right. All right. Well, I just want to talk about the debt ceiling mostly. And I, I think that, I mean, that there's a very easy few solutions that we can do to to curb it and those being of course taxing corporations taxing the top one percent making sure that those that already have the means to exist that they're kept in line especially whenever they have interest abroad in military and even at home in in the private prison systems where they do make quite a pretty penny and just as well, um, like I said, uh, abroad, I mean, our soldiers are dying over there, and they're, they're making a lot of the money um, at their expense. I mean, th things like, th simple things like hammers can cost around $500 just to make a profit, just okay. selling it abroad. All right. So you would like to keep it in-house, so to speak? Personally, I would like the biggest corporations or uh, a phrase that I think I coined. Uh, I would like to turn too big to fail into too big to be private property because, let's face it, companies that are that big, big enough to control everything and act like a, a, a government itself, I don't think that's fair. Okay. So... Well What's your solution to that? Uh, should, should we break up big companies if we're going to, you know, take your opinion there? Should we not allow a company to get to be a certain size? I mean, that seems sort of unfair to me. Oh, I don't think it's unfair. I mean, if we're supposed to have a democratic government and an actual government that's run by a state, then I think the state should be over all these corporations not the other way around but if we have a private business let's say you have a business here locally that we start servicing uh, the oil industry as we have many entrepreneurs in our area that do that and their business grows and it grows and it grows and then they they branch out from you know Terrebonne Parish to Lafourche Parish and from Lafourche to New Orleans from New Orleans to Texas and so on and so forth and they become a big corporation. Are you saying at some point in time the government should step in and say you need to break up because you're becoming too big? Absolutely. It's a hindrance upon the whole economy and, and the jobs of millions of other people. I, I mean, I, I think that they should know what's going to happen to them if they get that big. Okay. All right. Well, I guess you're entitled to your opinion. I think you and I uh, disagree on that issue, uh, but I guess you're into, you know, I can understand if you don't want them getting tax breaks and if you think that's unfair, but to, you know, require them to break up their company because they're being successful, uh, no, you know, that just doesn't seem like, you know, the free world that we're supposed to live in here in America. That's the thing, though. I mean, it's not an issue of success versus not success and or an issue between freedom and not freedom. Freedom shouldn't be determined by how much money you have. Freedom should be determined by your constitution and how democratic it is. And we do have a very democratic constitution. We always have because, I mean, that's just it. We're America. We're the freest nation in the world. But our problem is the fact that our free market is very, very, very overreaching. And like I said, only the people with money get to have that sort of freedom. I mean, back in the 1930s, I mean, 
I think it was great to be, to be proud to be an American because, I mean, we were the most revolutionary country in the world, and we were the freest country in the world. Well, but, but you don't think that invites, you know, for one, I think, I, th I think your position is against free enterprise, but if, if, so, you know, doesn't that invite a business to say, all right, well, I'm not going to try to grow my business here nationally. I'm just going to go overseas somewhere and, and, and create a large business over there uh, because if I stay in America, then, you know, they're going to take all my money away from me. Well, if they're not big to begin with, then they won't matter either way. Okay. But all right. Well, look, I, I, I guess we uh, disagree on the issue, but certainly you're entitled to, to your opinion. That's what makes us all Americans, right? Right. And I mean, just one more thing. I mean, just think about like the railroad system way back when. It, it used to be privately owned, but they re realized that that wasn't necessarily the best thing to do. And I mean, I think that that's the case for a lot of things. Okay. Thank you for the call. All right. Have a good day. All right. Let's go to the next caller. Hello. Welcome to Bayou Town. Hello, Jason. Yeah. How you doing tonight? All right, doing fine. What would you like to discuss? Well, I'd like to discuss that hurricane. The hurricane? Okay. Which one? Because there's another one brewing out there. Well, huh? the but one it... that's going to probably hit New York. Okay. All right. I wonder how they're going to feel. If they get Is that, hit that, like that's us. That's Irene, right? Right. Yeah. I well, how... they, they're talking about if, if that thing comes on high tide in New York, New York may see some flooding exactly. in the subways. Yeah. I wonder how they're going to feel, McKay, Senator McKay up there when Louisiana asked for help, said we didn't need help from Maine. Yeah. Uh, they, they turned us all down for help w w during Katrina. Now, I wonder if they're going to ask us to go help them. Well, you make, I mean, an, you make an interesting point because I wonder what happens if New York is flooded and the subways right. are flooded. Does that mean they're going to get a whole bunch of money to create some big, huge flood wall to protect the city of New York? I would tend to lead to believe that they probably would give them the money because, you know, I guess what the previous caller was just talking about, there's so many big businesses there and much of our nation's economy stimulates from New York. So they probably would pump in a lot of money there to protect them, okay, which well, would hurt us here down south, right? I was watching a documentary the other night. The perfect storm would yeah. hit that coal and flood Washington, New York, and all these people that don't want to. Did, did McKay and McCain? McCain even said he didn't want to help Louisiana on on a plane. We didn't. We didn't need no help during Katrina. Now I wonder how they're gonna feel if the rest of the country turn on them. You know. But that's just a little food for thought. Yeah, that's 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 a good topic to throw out there. That's that's an interesting point. What's going to happen? You know, does it does it shed light on our issue down here? Would people across the nation be more uh, willing to help us out, and would Congress be more willing to give us money for our flood protection uh, as opposed to holding us up, or would they just say, no, we need to set you aside and take care of New York first? It's just like when President Bush didn't want to sign the word of bill. He held that up for years, you know, and, and they, they didn't want to sign that word of bill, you know. And uh, another thing I was watching on the documentary, uh, when the cure-all was out there by the, by, the, uh, by the river. Yeah. They, you seen that? No. They opened a part of the river up and let the water flow through, and it was six foot deep when they started, and just built a bunch of land up. Okay. But... It's too easy for the coal engineers. Is that the to, slurrying type of method that they were doing? No, they wasn't pumping it. They were just oh, well, they, they just, just picked up a wall. What river was this on? The Chaffalai? This was on the uh, Mississippi River at okay. Bootville over there. All right. Where they uh where they they uh anchor these ships and all. Mm. Yeah. Well, anyway, they they opened the levee up and let the water from the Mississippi River flow through a, a mile or something. I don't know the exact measurement. Well, anyway, this river built up, I don't know how much land in, uh, I think it was eight months or something like that. And it worked. You know, like, uh, what they, you know, like, uh, like the spillway built up sand. Yeah. When they opened the spillway. Yeah. They did the same thing there. Okay. Well, it worked. 
but they would have to, and then the co engineers got to go through a whole bunch of process now. Well, they want to test they it. Too and, good. Yeah, because that's right. They want to test it to make sure it doesn't uh, contain yeah. any hazards or anything like that, hazardous material. Well, yep. they know if they know it works, Jason. It was growing grass and all. I mean, it's growing uh, plants and all on it already. Mm. And uh, like Wendell was saying, it was six foot deep right here, and you can walk on it now. It's pure land okay that's another point uh that i i seen on that documentary all right that perfect storm we're gonna see how these people are gonna feel if you hit new york with all these millions thank you for the call they've been taking it from us for years thank you for the call that's all a right, good Jason, point take care, yeah. okay appreciate it let's go to the next call hello welcome to bayou town uh good evening jason hey uh i want to respond to the first caller all right um, I think what that man, he sounds like a younger man. He's it had some... to me what that man said was that you don't want to reward private corporations that fail. I think his example was um, like the auto industry and uh, some yeah. of these financial institutions. Okay. And uh, uh, when he mentions the railroad, it, it, it made me think of uh, the historic move when the government took over the railroads. All right. Um, you know, it, it's one thing when you reward success for people that are in the private sector and they work hard and they earn everything they get, but they get too big and they mismanage and... Uh, if they're part of the economic chain where vital goods need to get where they need to get and they provide this service and they're failing with that service, I mean, we have executive orders at the executive level that takes over industries in times of uh, chaos. And, and, and we know that these executive orders exist ever since John Kennedy. But he makes a very good point when... Uh, 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 when an industry fails, you, they shouldn't be rewarded by uh, the taxpayer uh, bailing them out without paying us back. And well, if that's I, the case, well, I can I, see the government taking over something like that. Well, but but what I was taking is that he doesn't want to even reward success. In other words, if a business becomes to a point where they're successful, uh, he wants to cut them down. Well, I didn't take it that way because it sounds to me like he had a liability clause there. And the liability clause was, should that company fail? And I think he, he directs that to his opening comment uh, referring to the financial industry and the automotive industry uh, when uh, Obama first came in office. I think his point was well made. And I, I think... Uh, uh, there might have been some confusion as so far you, as you, understanding his point, but well, I believe I understood his point. point. I just I, I I just disagreed with his point, but I, I take it that you agree with his point. Well, I agree with the point that the, with the point that he made, and um, I feel like I'm pretty clear with the point he made. He was referring to failed industries uh, mm -hmm. that uh, you know. Uh, I don't think the government has any business going into private industry when they're doing well and they're providing a service. Well, I don't that's... think that was his point. The other point I'd like to make, uh, Jason, uh, I would like to ask anybody out there who has a child that wants to go to the next door neighbor, knowing that there's unsupervised, uh, there's, there's, no un, there's no supervising adult there. Would you allow your own child, 12 years old, to visit your next door neighbor where you know that there are other kids, but there's no supervising adult? Oh, that seems like a problem. Well, you see, that's my point. My point is, why would we make that decision with our next door neighbor, but we wouldn't make that decision with Burger King? <laughs> okay, it, I think it, I think it's a stretch. You get my point? No, I, yeah, I think it's a bad point. I really do. I think it's a bad point. Well, I, I think my point is, is if you can make a judgment against your next door neighbor, you should be able to make a judgment. Well, it's not against the next door neighbor. It's talking about a group of kids at a house hanging out without any supervision. 
when you go to supervision at BK when, when you go to room. when you go to a Burger King, uh, I think that's a public place, and you would think, and one would think that they wouldn't have to worry about some monster doing something uh, something wrong to their child. Again, well, yeah, but I, I, I we live in a ha it. apparently we live in a different world than when other people grew up okay I understand Martin often makes the comments we're not in Mayberry anymore but I yeah. don't think but at some point uh, I don't think you know a parent has to we have to hold a parent accountable for not holding the hand of a 12 year old to go to the bathroom at some what? point they got to be allowed to go to the bathroom by themselves and look it's 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 horrible what happened but the only person to blame, in my opinion, the way the facts is I appreciate it, is the man who committed that alleged crime. When, when Not I was the a parent. young man, Jason, my older brother was in the military, and we used to bring him to the Greyhound bus station. And one of the scariest places that I knew of was in uh, the, the Greyhound bus station uh, restroom because there was older men in that restroom that would just hang around in that restroom. I really didn't like going. All right, but that you don't often see that at a restaurant. At a restaurant, you have people going in and out. You have cameras all over the place. Apparently, it, I mean, I, I could certainly understand that. But I it, mean, it, it's not as though they let a four-year-old go into some place, some strange place by themselves, unsupervised, hours on end. And I think that's why I think I, that's why I disagree with your your analogy about allowing you know, a 12-year-old to go hang out at a house for a period of time with other 12-year-olds. We all, well, I think most of us would think that that's a bad idea. A, a Burger King restaurant is a private business just like the Greyhound bus station bathroom is. And I, I, would, I would think that there were very few people that would let their children unguarded uh, uh, be uh, going in and out of a Greyhound bus stop, uh, 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 a Greyhound uh, uh, bus station uh, restroom. Well, and I think it's one thing that's, uh, and I think something else is different if you just allow a juvenile to go to the Burger King or go to any public place by themselves unsupervised. But that's There's not, no, to my understanding, that's not what occurred there. Yeah, well, what I, what, I, uh, what I believe is that there's nobody supervising the restroom at any of these public places okay. or any of these uh, private businesses. There's no supervisor for the bathroom. It, it's non-existent. And knowing that, to me, that's a great equivalent to your next door neighbor. If you can't expect supervision, adult supervision at your next door neighbor, why would you let him in Burger King? Thank you that's for your point. I understand your point. Thank, thank you for the call. You have a good night, Jason. All right, appreciate it. If you agree or disagree with any of the calls tonight, feel free to call in 879 one two three one uh we have some callers on the line we have one phone line open as the phone lines are now working correctly uh eight seven nine one two three one if you'd like to get involved we need to take a short break and we'll come back with your phone calls 